Sleep certainly changes our view of the kind of creatures we are because it is a sort of little death. And what the death tells us is that we survive it. Oh, we go to sleep, we, our consciousness is obliterated, and sure thing, next day we recreate ourselves. And this is such a regular occurrence that, of course, we just take it for granted, but it is a kind of miracle. How come that we lose consciousness and then, out of nothing, bring it all back again? It's like a kind of big bang in a way. The universe was created out of nothing. We repeat that every day when we w w wake up. And I think it's been very important to people right through history in understanding the nature of consciousness. In particular, it's given them great confidence that they will survive not only these many deaths, but perhaps the final death of all, that they will wake up after the death of their physical bodies in an afterlife. How has the, um, the, the reality of sleep affected uh, our perception over time as a species? Has it given us a different perceptions of reality? I think dreams are a wonderful playground. Um, and yes, we learn a lot from them. It's been quite common in recent times to try and produce very low-level reductionist theories of dreams. They're just the computer programs running backwards or whatever it may be. I think the only people who make that kind of claim are people who don't really mm. have dreams or remember them. To most of us, I'm sure, or to you, Robert, dreams are quite clearly extraordinary original creations. They have a narrative. They tell stories. Um, they, we learn from them. We enter worlds which we didn't know before in them. Now, what could be the purpose of that? Well, my idea has been that actually... Dreams are, really are, it's not just a playground, but dreams are a form of play, and they form, they serve the same functions as play. What play does, ordinary play out, out in working life, it allows us to experiment with alternative realities in a kind of safe environment. We can play at being doctors and nurses, or cowboys and Indians, all sorts of other games, adult games as well, in which we take on roles which actually we've never yet experienced before. Well, we do that even more so, perhaps, at night in the theatre of our dreams. Um, completely safe, nature sees to it that we paralyse our bodies from the neck down so we don't act out our dreams, and then we can fly, we can fight, we can make love or whatever it may be, in completely new kinds of situations with new people, with old people sometimes, other friends who uh, perhaps don't even have a, any idea of how we're exploiting them in our dreams. Yeah. But we're learning all the time. We're getting introduced to what it would be like to be in that situation. And as psychologists, I mean now natural psychologists, human beings who need to understand all the possibilities of being human, what dreams do is introduce us to some of those other possibilities, which we can then use our knowledge to apply in waking life. I'll give you one remarkable example of that. Midwives, when they first start working on the labour wards, almost all, I've talked to a lot of them, I did some research on this, they start dreaming of giving birth. Now, most of these women, young women, have not actually had babies themselves, and yet they're in a position, it's their job, to care for and to minister to and interpret the anxieties of mothers in that real situation of real childbirth. What the nurses, midwives told me again and again was that they learnt through their dreams much more about the experience of the patients they were dealing with, the mothers they were dealing with. And through that, they could empathise, they could sympathise, they could interpret the mother's feelings in ways they'd never been able to otherwise. Well, look at that for a wonderful function for dreams. By playing at giving birth, the midwife is actually gaining really useful social knowledge. You say the purpose, the function of dreams. Do you see an evolutionary benefit to it? Yes, absolutely, in that particular respect. It's one of the most important things which our minds undertake is to do, understand other human beings. We've been become, we've evolved to be what I call natural psychologists who are brilliant at mind reading. But we read other people's minds by projecting ourselves into them. And so we can only understand other people insofar as in some, some way or another, we've been there ourselves. But there are many situations we haven't and couldn't have been in ourselves in real life. Well, perhaps we've been there in our dreams, and perhaps 
our dream experiences genuinely give us insight into what it would be like to be somebody in this real situation which we now uh, find them in.